Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a list of 21 books that I would like to read in 2021. I noticed a lot of these videos going around and I wasn't going to make one, but then I decided, why not? Seems like fun. So here we go. I have made my own list of kind of bizarre rules for how I picked these books. This is not quite a TBR, but these are just books that I would like to read. And I decided that they're going to be all backlist books. So not only are they not going to be books that are releasing this year, 2021, they are also going to be books that released before 2020, because I feel like there are still a few new releases from last fall that I am working my way through at the moment. And it just seemed like kind of a cop out to pick books that came out in 2020. So all of the books on this list are books that released 2019 or earlier. And as an extra bonus challenge for myself, in case that wasn't bad enough, I decided that what I wanted to do was make about half of them books that were released before 2000. Why 2000? I don't know. It seemed like a good idea. So the first 11 books on this list are books that released between 2000 and 2019, and then the last 10 books on the list released before 2000. These are otherwise in absolutely no order whatsoever, except the order that I thought of them while making this list. And it was pretty hard to come up with enough books that didn't release recently that I could remember that I wanted to read. But I think I've come up with kind of a fun and varied list. And you might be surprised by some of the things on here if you watch my channel and you know that all I usually read is fantasy and science fiction. So book number one is The Beautiful One by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This is already kind of a cheat because this book is re-releasing this spring, but it was originally published in 2017, so I'm gonna count this towards my list. I don't know too much about this book, but she does have a note that says, for people who only know me from Mexican Gothic, I should warn you all my books tend to straddle different genres and have a very different feel from one another. This is very much a novel of manners and a romance, much closer in tone to Gods of Jade and Shadow than some of my other work and very far from Mexican Gothic. So that sounds perfect for me because I think that Silvia Moreno-Garcia is an amazing writer. I was very grossed out by Mexican Gothic because I cannot handle horror to save my life and I loved Gods of Jade and Shadow. So I feel like this sounds perfect for me. Book number two is Rosemary and Rue by Seanan McGuire, which was first published in 2009. This is the first book in her October Day series, which is probably her best known longest running series. I am currently reading the Encrypted series. I'm on book five right now, which is also a really fun series by Seanan McGuire. I enjoy her writing a lot. Basically getting to Rosemary and Rue is contingent on me finishing the Encrypted series, but hey, I figured this was a book that was written quite a while ago and I want to read it, so why not put it on this list? Book number three is All Systems Read by Martha Wells, which is the first Murderbot novella and is also something that has been on my radar for a little while. I feel like the idea of a snarky AI just seems right up my alley. I like humorous science fiction a lot and I've heard that this is kind of dark and sassy so it seems like something I would really like. I've been encouraged to check it out so I'm looking forward to trying this at some point. Oh and in case I didn't say it, this novella was originally published in 2017. Book number four is The Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. This is the first book in the Greek Coats series, which has also been on my radar for a little while now. I think a lot of people have been reading it recently and it seems kind of Three Musketeers inspired, which is all I know about it, but that is honestly all it takes for me to be sold. This book was originally published in 2014. And this is another one that I am really hoping to get to this year. Also, I hope all these people who are making these lists of 21 books for 2021 are thinking through the ramifications of what they're creating here. Are we going to be doing 22 books in 2022? Are we gonna be doing 30 books in 2030? Eventually, we're just gonna run out of space. Okay, for book number five, we have one that I actually own. I've mentioned before, I've been meaning to read this book for such a long time. It's The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this is kind of, I've seen it shelved as both historical fiction and fantasy. It's quite short. I know it's set, according to the back, in post-Arthurian Britain. And I'm not really sure how much of a fantastical element it has, but Ishiguro is one of my all-time favorite authors. I just haven't read anything by him in quite a while. And this book, I did not write down when it was published in, so I'm gonna have to check. Oops, 2015. I knew it had been out for a few years. I've probably been meaning to read this for like six years now, so hopefully I'll get to it soon. 
Book number six on the list is Provenance by Anne Leckie. This is a standalone science fiction book that's set in the same world as her science fiction trilogy, The Imperial Ratch. Still not sure if I'm saying that right, despite the fact that I read all three books. There's a lot of unpronounceable things in that series. Anyway, I really enjoyed that trilogy. I really enjoyed her standalone fantasy, The Raven Tower, which was one of my top books of last year, even though it was really strange and I had to read it twice before I liked it. Um, but I think she's a really unique and interesting writer. And I saw some mixed reviews about provenance that some people missed the characters and the backstory from her original trilogy, but I would still really like to see what this book is all about. And provenance was also originally published in 2017, which seems like it's a popular year so far. Maybe not. I think this is like the third one. Anyway, moving on. Book number seven is the only nonfiction book that made it onto this list. It is Range by David Epstein, and it is about why generalists triumph in a specialized world. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because my father has been trying to get me to read this book since it came out, I think. My husband actually listened to it, an audiobook, and told me all about it, so I kind of feel like I've read it. But even so, I think every other conversation I have with my father, he probably asks me if I've read it yet. Um, so I really just should, and I just haven't yet. I thought maybe continuing to put it on lists like this might encourage me to buckle down and do it. So here we go. Book number eight is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. This is a book that's actually a reread and I don't usually forget that I've read books, but I honestly forgot I had read this book until I was working on making this list. I remembered, oh, Tasha Suri, I think I've been meaning to read something by her. So I clicked on Empire of Sand and I realized that the synopsis actually sounded very, very familiar and I had read the book and I'm pretty sure that I liked it. But there's a second one in the duology and I honestly don't remember Empire of Sand very well at all and I think I probably should reread it. I don't know, I normally wouldn't want to reread a book that apparently made so little of an impression, but the impression, like what I can remember, is positive. So I think I would like to try reading this book again because I do think I liked it. And this book was originally published in 2018. Book number nine is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. This is another one that has kind of been on my radar, mostly through booktube for quite a while. It is apparently about assassin nuns, which seems to be more of a fantasy trope than one would expect. I did try Mark Lawrence's first series many, many years ago on the recommendation of a friend and did not like the first book in that very much at all. I can't remember what it's called right now. I think Prince of Thorns. Anyway, I do get kind of a different vibe from what I've heard about Red Sister and it does sound kind of cool in its own way, so I'm pretty curious to try this. It has been on my low priority series I would like to get to list if I did have a list like that, which I don't, it's just in my head. Um, and this originally came out in 2017 as well. I told you that was a popular year. Book number 10 is another one that has been very popular on booktube, especially recently, and that is Sword of Kaigen which was published in 2019, and it is by M.L. Wong. This is a book I actually know nothing about other than that it is self-published and that a lot of people have really loved it recently and rated it among their favorite books in the last few years. So I am always looking for unique standalone fantasy and this seems like an interesting one to check out. So I definitely would like to read this this year. All right, and now for my last book in the 2000 to 2019 bracket, we have Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, which was published in 2009. This is a book that I remember hearing about a lot when it came out. It won the Man Booker Prize and was generally very acclaimed among literary circles. It's historical fiction. It's kind of a fictional biography of Thomas Cromwell. And I've heard that the writing style is a little bit strange and that some people hate it and some people love it, but there's a whole series of them now. And I've sort of been low key curious about this series for a long time. So I, you know, might get to it in 2021, especially if I try to follow through on my goal of reading more historical fiction this year. Okay, now we are on to books written before 2000 because 
This was something I really had to research. I can usually think of things that came out in the last few years that I haven't gotten to or I've heard about recently or things like that, but really books that are a lot older, I had to put forth some effort to think of things. So for book number 12, we have The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is also historical fiction. I know nothing about it other than that I've seen it at probably every bookstore I've ever been to and he seems to write a lot of books in general and I rather ambitiously bought this at a used bookstore maybe about a year ago and have not even opened it since then, but I would like to at least give it a try at some point. I assume it's famous for some reason, even if I don't end up liking it. So yeah, we'll see if I get to this in 2021, but I would like to. It's been sitting on my shelf for long enough. And The Pillars of the Earth was written in 1989. Maybe that's why he's had time to write so many books since then. Book number 13 is not just one book, it's a quartet. I had a goal of reading more Diana Wynne Jones this year, so I decided to look and see what books by her I had never read at all, and I found the Dilmark Quartet, which is one of her, well actually I don't know if it's one of her older series, but the first book was released in 1975, and it's a fantasy quartet. I'm pretty sure it's middle grade because most of her stuff is middle grade to young adult, but even the things of hers that are more aimed at a slightly older audience are probably a little juvenile compared to today's young adult. I don't know, marketing categories are weird. Anyway, I have not read these books and I have read a lot of what she's written, so I thought it would be nice to put down this series. Book number 14 is Persuasion by Jane Austen, which was written in 1818 and was published well, it was published in 1818, which is after she died, so I'm pretty sure she wrote it before then. I think I've read everything else by Jane Austen and I've never read Persuasion. The main thing that I remember about it is that it's supposedly a slightly more mature love story where the uh, main character turned down her suitor many years before because her family convinced her that he wasn't a good match and she kind of regrets it and then he comes back into her life. That's all I know about Persuasion. Overall, I'm a Jane Austen fan. I like this period of literature usually, so I would like to read this just to round out having read everything by Jane Austen. So next we have this nice big chunky book. This is actually 10 books in one and it's about the length of a single Stormlight Archive book. This is the Chronicles of Amber, or is the, this is the Great Book of Amber, including the complete Amber Chronicles, all the novels of the Towering Fantasy Saga, complete in one volume. Okay, this is actually basically two fantasy series in one. The first one, I think, is the Chronicles of Amber. Anyway, I've read the first five books in this. This is something that my husband remembered reading when he was younger and early on when we were dating we read the first five books together and then barely got into the sixth one which is technically a new series. So I should go back and finish books six through ten which are technically the Merlin Chronicles. They are about the son of the main character in the first five books, Corwin. So his son is named Merlin and he I think is going to end up being more of a, you know, cyberpunk hacker type character and less of a fantasy hero. I don't know. I don't really remember. It was written in the 80s, okay? I think the first one was written in 1985 from what I saw. So I don't think most people like the second five books as much as the first five books, but I'm still kind of curious and, you know, it's still five books for the price of half a Stormlight Archive book. You know, you can't really go wrong, right? That's that's value. And apparently I forgot to say who this was by. So the Chronicles of Amber are by Roger Zelazny. So for book number 16, I've been tentatively wanting to try more books by Neil Gaiman because the only thing I ever read by him was American Gods when I was a teenager and I was kind of traumatized by it and I've just never picked up anything else by him again. So I was kind of researching to see what was a recommended starting place and a lot of people said start with with either Stardust or The Graveyard Book, both of which I've heard of and neither of which I know anything about. So I thought Stardust sounded nice. Also, I remember seeing this story in Patrick Rothfuss's World Builders charity fundraising event he does every year about an arc of Stardust that has become kind of a fabled thing in that fundraiser. And I think that's why I decided to go for Stardust. So I think this is a pretty short book. I, I don't really know what it's about but maybe I will end up with a different impression of Neil Gaiman than I 
did from American Gods, or maybe I would be totally fine with American Gods. I don't really know. One of my favorite books of all time is Good Omens, which was written by both Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. The really funny thing is I'm not the hugest Terry Pratchett fan either, although I do enjoy Discworld sometimes. So I think it's really funny that two authors that I'm kind of okay with somehow wrote this book that I absolutely love. Anyway, I'm going to try to give Stardust a go this year and see if I end up liking Neil Gaiman more than I think. Book number 17 is one I've mentioned a few times on the channel recently. It is A Hero Born by Jin Yang. This is the first book in a very famous Chinese series. I know technically I think this is part of the first book, so I'm not sure because I think the original book was serialized, so I don't know whether I should consider that a series or a book. But anyway, this is the first part of it, whatever it is, and I have seen that there are some issues with this translation, but this is also the only translation that exists of this book into English. It's in the process of being translated right now, so I think I'm just going to go with it. This book was originally published or started being serialized in 1957, so really quite a long time ago, and apparently 300 million copies have sold worldwide, so it's kind of too bad that this is only just getting translated into English. I've seen a few other people have picked up copies of this. Curious to see what people will think of it, but I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. Book number 18 was published in 1987, and it is Dragon's Bane by Barbara Hambly. I have never heard of anyone reading this book, except this is the book that Brandon Sanderson credited with getting him into reading when he was a younger teenager, and he described it as being about a retired dragon slayer who gets kind of called out of retirement to go fight a dragon, and I thought that sounded like a really interesting concept, and I'm also curious to see what inspired teenage Brandon Sanderson so much that he got hooked on fantasy. So I think it would be really interesting to see what this book is like and does it hold up today. I'm kind of intrigued. For book number 19, I went back to another one of my all-time favorite authors that I haven't read absolutely everything by, Connie Willis, who has written a lot of science fiction over the years and has written some of my favorite books. And I looked at her bibliography and I found a book called Remake from 1995 that I have definitely never read. Apparently it's about a dystopian near future where computer animation and sampling have turned the film industry into something that's completely artificial. And I am actually just really curious to see what people thought was going to happen when it was 1995 and technology was in a pretty different place then. And obviously this is something that has become increasingly possible, although we're not 100% there yet. So I think it actually could just be really funny to see how this book gets done. Okay, for book number 20, we have The Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov, which was originally written in 1953. So again, pretty long time ago. This is very short. It's the first book in his Robot series, which he ended up tying in with his Foundation series. I bought this at a used bookstore earlier this year. My husband read it. I think he liked it okay. He wasn't a huge fan. Um, I have never been a huge fan of Isaac Asimov, but I know he's a really respected older science fiction writer. I have read parts of the Foundation series and things like that, so I'm just kind of curious to see what this book is like. It seemed like kind of an interesting premise, and we'll see. I don't always connect as well to older science fiction, which is more about ideas than characters and sometimes plots, but this also does seem like it has kind of a mystery detective component, and I do like old school mysteries quite a lot, so this could go either way for me in terms of whether I end up enjoying it. Okay, I will admit after 20 books, I could not think of anything else that I wanted to read that was written before 2000, and I panicked and texted my mother and asked her to recommend something that was written before the year 2000 for a video, and she asked if it had to be fantasy, and I said no, I do read other things sometimes, which is kind of true. So she recommended A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute, which um, I will read the description of it to you because it sounds pretty interesting and I have not read anything by Neville Shute, I do not think. This was written in 1950 and here's the synopsis. Jean Paget, a young English woman living in Malaya, is captured by the invading Japanese and forced on a brutal seven-month death march with dozens of other women and children. A few years after the war, Jean is back in England, the nightmare behind her. 
However, an unexpected inheritance inspires her to return to Malaya to give something back to the villagers who saved her life. But it turns out that they have a gift for her as well. The news that the young Australian soldier, Joe Harmon, who had risked his life to help the women, had miraculously survived. Jean's search for Joe leads her to a desolate Australian outpost called Willstown, where she finds a challenge that will draw on all the resourcefulness and spirit that carried her through her wartime ordeals. So I think this sounds pretty interesting. I also think it's interesting that it is a book that was written in 1950, which is very soon after World War II ended. So it's not really a war novel, but I'm sure it will feel very different than a historical novel that was written today because it will still be kind of close to the time period it's talking about. So that would be kind of an interesting read. So I'm putting that as book number 21 on my 21 books to read in 2021. Thanks so much for watching. I really am going to try to read as many of these as I can this year. This list was mostly for fun, but also I think I do want to read everything on this list and I'm going to try to get to them. I do have a lot of other stuff I want to read as well. I do want to leave some room in my life for spontaneity and not just do so many videos at the beginning of the year planning out things to read that I'm not actually going to get to. But I think a lot of the things that I found seem pretty interesting and it was kind of a fun exercise to do a little bit of digging to find some older books that sounded interesting to me instead of just going with whatever is the latest release. And I really like reading new releases because I like keeping up with where the genres that I'm interested in are at at the moment. But even so, this was very interesting and I think I found some things that hopefully I'll read that I would not normally have thought to read. So I would encourage you guys whether or not you want to come up with 21 books to read in 2021 that are backlist books, maybe just look and see if there are any things by authors you like or just older books and check those out this year.